yeah, if you get, there's so many nuggets that they're trying to give us. One of the things we're going to do for goals going forward, and depending on how things go, we're, we're, we have our app, we're going to put this information out, I'm going to ask Carolyn to help me with some of the goals. She's great with the goals. Also, with the extended school year, that's important too, we're going to put some of that information out. I want to introduce Nicole. She's going to talk about supplemental aids and services, what your child needs to be successful. Nicole Grabowski. Michelle's. Michelle Gordon? Is that hers? Do you think somebody said yes, Michelle? Yes, Michelle Gordon. Okay, Gordon. Michelle Gordon. Okay, ladies, I come from a little bit of a different perspective. I'm a behavioralist. What I do is rehabilitation counseling. So I am all about the supplementary aids and support. So to demonstrate that, I want all of you ladies to stand up. Okay. Wiggle around for a minute. Feel your toes. Feel your fingers. All right, you guys can sit back down. I know. So then if you're doing this, think about it. Just that brief moment of movement re-energizes us. Why are we asking our children, who we know at home, move about every two to four minutes, why are we asking them to sit through a 20 to 30 minute presentation from their teachers? Because they've stopped listening. So what we need to do in the supplementary aids and supports section is put in the things that we know our children need. Okay, for example, um, we have technologies. We have our phones. For example, I have my little timer on my phone. Our children come with phones, they come with iPads. We use them at home. Why are we not using them in the classroom? And with most schools, you can bring them in. These are things that we can get evaluated for. And you want to find, what did you use in your toolbox? When you go out to dinner at night with your children, what do you bring in your purse? We have all these tools for distractions. I gave a few of you some Legos. Have you noticed that you've been fidgeting with the Legos? Legos are fidgets. A variety of things are fidgets that allow our children to get the input that they need to be able to learn academically. I have an autistic son who can learn better when he's upside down than he can when he's sitting up right side up. <laughs> so we actually have um, taught him yoga to give him the input that he needs in the classroom to be able to continue on. He's in the back corner of his classroom. He's doing stretches. All the kids just, they think it's cool. I have had actually several teachers integrate and have me go in and teach this type of yoga to their classroom that they use because they have found it will increase their ability. For example, um, when we say manipulatives, we find things that use. How many remember these old things? <laughs> this is a manipulative. This is something that gives your children visuals. We all have Common Core. We all have our own personal feelings about Common Core and what has happened with math. You can give your children a variety of things that they can use in their daily academic life. And this is where it goes into these supplementary aids and supports. So I just have a few as I'm going through. We go from small to large. Now that's a large one. That's for a younger child. You get into older children. This is a simple fidget, $3, nothing big. The schools have these. Most people don't know, in every school building, there, uh, the social worker has a bag of fidgets. What these will do is increase your child's ability to focus. Now, many people say, well, I don't know how to get these in. I'm not sure what to do. I have a full list of accommodations that I get from many children, and that, again, will also be on our app. So the only way to get that is to go to our app, you know. And <laughs> with our fidgets, um, I know a lot of you picked up squeeze balls, things like that. Little things that children, other children next to them aren't going to realize they're using, but they're going to bring back that focus. The Legos, a simple thing. Every kid loves Legos. Believe it or not, Legos is one of the best things recommend, OTs recommend for children that have attention issues because it's a concrete thing. It also gives the push and pull something simple they can have in their hand. Also a reward system. This is where you're going to put that reward system in there. We're going to determine what things does this child need to get them to work. Now many of them say, well, we're going to give them cards. And I hate those words 
because the simple cards aren't going to get the attention of your child. We all know them. Make it individualized. My son earns iPad time at home when academically he finishes things in class. So to remind him, he gets these Minecraft stickers. And when Minecraft gets boring, we'll find some else sticker that he enjoys. But he knows he's working for that. So we have implementarily placed my son in a position where academically he knows I need to finish this 10 minutes of math and I'm gonna get that reward. And then the next time, maybe we can do it for 15 or we can do it to 20. Now we all have kids and, and with this document, I want all of you guys to know this is a fluid document. I want you guys to go home, grab your IEPs and tear them apart. I'm gonna be honest because there's so much and we've got all of these experts up here to tell you, you need to look at it. You need to find out where is your child. I recommend um, most people when they go to IEPs with me, bring a picture of your son or daughter, stick it in the middle of the table because everybody needs to be reminded on why we are here. This child wants to learn. This child has the ability to learn. It's what is going to make that child tick. And you want to look at it when we're looking at this. Like I've heard a lot of discussions over the weekend about discipline issues in school. And that's the biggest thing we have with a lot of our children. They're just dealing with the behavior. They're not dealing and getting the support in before the behavior happens. So a little section that I, I think is very important to have in here, and I have it put in all my supplementary aids and supports. I actually have a functional behavioral plan being in place during this section. The reason for that is it will always have to be there. A functional behavioral support, and, we, and I'm real big on use positive behavioral support plan. But before that can ever happen, there needs to be a functional behavioral assessment. With this, this two-part component of document, you are going to be able to gain the information on why is my son or daughter reacting this way at school. Because we all know why they act at home. But in a school setting, you have a lot of other children, you have a lot of other um, stimuli, lights, sounds, smells, allergies, other children with issues. There's children who had a bad day the night before they come in, they're always crabby until 10 a.m. If your child's sitting right next to them, it's an issue. A very simple example, my son's allergic to cats. And for some reason, he was just doing horrible in school. Behavior, behavior, behavior. So I said, okay, I'm gonna come in and see what's different in his classroom. So I came in, and within 10 minutes, I realized he started sneezing when he came to school. My son is sneezing at home. Why in the world is he sneezing at school? Well, I just changed the desks. So we started looking at the environment. Was it a cleaning product? Was it this? Was it that? Come to find out the little girl that sits next to him has six cats. <laughs> my son can't handle cats. <laughs> so once we were able to change his positioning in the classroom, he, all of his de behaviors decreased again. So very simple things, but you wanna know who is in there looking at these behavioral things. And um, we have the resources of all of us ladies. You have your advocates. I'm real big on behavior modification. Changing the behaviors that are gonna get you to these goals. What behaviors are preventative to the goals that you want accomplished. The aids and supports are where you're gonna go. The biggest thing that I like to mention is a concept called mastery of key concepts. This is a very good nugget to take with you because mastery of key concepts is different for every child. And a teacher will tell you, well, they have to do 50% of it. That might not necessarily mean what your child has mastered. For example, um, you might have 100 questions. Your child may only be required to do 25 because if they, they can only com uh, complete 25 in class, you don't want go them going home and having four hours of homework, which is then going to cause behavior, which is going to cause resentment, which then turns around at school, and it's a cycle. You want to stop these behaviors now. So for that mastery of key concepts, it can be 25, it can be 10. Um, my daughters are very familiar with the fact that they only do the odds in any problem. They have a sub, they do the odds. I've had subs call me and go, your children refuse to do half their work. No, they did not. We have it in their IEP, Mastery of Key Concepts. 
You can have supports in regards of movement. I have it in my, um, I recommend all IEPs, movement for our children. Just like that two minutes of standing up, moving those legs, moving those arms, your children need that. And if they're in a classroom where they have to sit for 45, 50 minutes, they've lost any input after about 20 because they need that input. And it can be simple as, I need my child to be placed in the back corner of the room because they need to be able to stand up and move around when they need to. Those are the things that you really want to put in there with that. Um, you also want to put in communication. This is the section where you're going to want to say, I want to be communicated on a daily basis or a weekly basis, and how and who is going to communicate with you. For example, they're going to say, well, we're going to get the info to you. You'll know. No, my son is not going to tell me if he got in trouble that day because he doesn't want to get in trouble at home. He is very intelligent enough to know if I tell Mama I did this, I'm going to have some consequences. What happens is I have it where the teacher has to email me. And then I have the resource room teacher who emails me on a weekly basis. And this is what we're working on. Um, in addition, you can have it how they communicate. We tried doing a log with my child. And the problem with my son having a log is he would forget it on days that there was something he didn't want me to read. Because he would read it and go, oh no, mama doesn't need to know. And it, would, um, it has ended up on the bus. It has ended up in his friend's backpack. I mean, a variety of places. So I had to have the teachers communicate with me. By law, they have to complete this. This is a legal document. And in the supports, you also want to look at, you have your OTs, your cognitive behaviors, all these different people we're having working with them. Ask them, what accommodations would you recommend for my child? And you put it in here in this Gates and Supplementary Report supports. It should go across the board. It should go from music to art to gen ed, to the bus drivers, to lunch. I always have my lunch staff know what my children's accommodations are. My son has a very simple one. When the lunch room's getting too much, they are to give him headphones. These are $3 noise deadening headphones. But for him to stay in a lunch room of that size and that level of noise, he can't handle it. And he also has the option for any of the lunch staff Lunch supervisors, lunch moms, everybody knows that at a certain point, my son can walk up and say, I need to go to the resource room. He is not, it is not something that makes him a spectacle. He quietly tells the staff. The staff allows him to go down to that resource room where he's able to decompress or do whatever sensory things he needs in that classroom. So these are the things that you want to have kind of popped in here. And as talking of accommodations, mine has just told me I'm done, ladies. <laughs> part of your IEPs. I hate to say it, but you should be planning for ESY in January. Um, you should also get in your prior IEP document that your ESY will be considered and completed, your child ESY will be considered and completed by May 1st. It needs to be written in your document. Okay, and I'm telling you that for a specific reason. You have my email address um, within this. If you have any questions, please feel free to um, contact me, but the ESY in the actual IEP document is listed on the back of the last page, page 14. Uh, and I want to give you a resource. Go to Rights Law and just put in